Welcome back everyone to VMware Explorer 22. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Dave Vellante. Our 12th year covering VMware's music conference, formerly known as VMworld, now rebranded as VMware Explorer. You have two great CUBE alumni coming on theCUBE. Ricky Cooper, SVP, worldwide partner commercial at VMware. Great to see you, thanks for coming on. Thank you. We just had a great Good chat at HPE again. Discover, and of course, yeah. Joseph George, Vice President of Compute Industry Alliances. Great to have you on, great to see you. Great to see you, John. So guys, this year is very curious at VMware, a lot going on, the name change of the event. Big, big move, bold move. And then they change the name of the event, then Broadcom buys them. A lot of speculation, but at the end of the day, this conference, kind of people were wondering what would be the barometer of the event. Uh, we're reporting this morning on the keynote analysis. Very good mojo on the keynote. Very transparent yep. about the Broadcom relationship. The expo floor last night was buzzing. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not, a show that's looking like it's going to be, you know, going down. <laughs> yep. um, this is clearly a wave, we're calling it super cloud, multi-cloud's their, their theme. Clearly the cloud's happening, <laughs> we, not to date ourselves, but 2013 we were discussing on the We Cube talked about that, yeah. In, in yeah. HP yeah. Discover about DevOps, infrastructure as code. Mm -hmm. We're full realization now of that. Yep. This is where we're at. You guys had a great partnership with VMware and HPE. Talk about where you guys see this coming together because the customers are refactoring. They are looking at cloud native. The whole Broadcom visibility to the VMware customer base has activated them. They're here and they're leaning in. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're seeing a renewed interest now as customers are looking at their entire infrastructure, bottoms up, all the way up the stack, and the notion of a hybrid cloud where you've got some visibility and control of your data and your infrastructure and your applications. Customers want to live in that sort of a cloud environment. And so we're seeing a, uh, a renewed interest, a lot of conversations we're having with customers now, a lot of customers committing to that model where they have applications and workloads running at the edge in their data center and in the public cloud in a lot of cases. But having that mobility, having that control, being able to have security in, in their own, uh, you know, in their control, there's a lot that you can do there. And obviously partnering with VMware, we've been partners for so long. 20 years. At yeah, least, yeah, at least, yeah. at least 20 years. Uh, back when they invented stuff. They were invented yeah, way, yeah, way yeah, yeah. Well, VMware's got a very technical culture, but Ricky, mm -hmm. I got to say that, you know, we commented earlier when Ragu was on the CEO, now mm -hmm. CEO, I mean, legendary product. I set the trajectory to VMware, everyone knows that. VMware, I can't know whether it was VMware or HP, HP, HP before it was HPE, coined hybrid. Because yeah. you guys were both yep. on, I can't recall, Dave, which company coined it first, but it was either one of you guys. Nobody else was it there. It was the partnership. It yes, was, I agree. I think it was there. I had the exact uh, same. Hybrid yeah. cloud. Yeah. And, you had high, you had Pat. You know, like, <laughs> you know, he, they had a big thing with Pat Gelsinger. Dave, yeah. remember when he said, you know, he got in my yeah. grill on the yeah, Cube yeah, yeah, live? Right. Um, but now multi-cloud, so comment. you see, you well, both. You focus on that multi-cloud aspect, right? So you've got a situation where our customers are looking at multi-cloud and they're looking at it not just as a flash in the pan. This is here for five years, 10 years, 20 years. Okay, so what does that mean then to our partners? and to our distributors, you're seeing a whole seed change. You're seeing partners now looking at this. So look at the um, OEMs, you know, the ones that have historically been vSphere customers are now saying, they're coming in droves saying, okay, what is the next step? Well, how can, how can I be a multi-cloud partner yep, with you? Right. How can I look at other aspects that we're driving here together? So, you know, GreenLake is a great example. We keep coming back to GreenLake and we're partaking in GreenLake at the moment. The real big thing for us is going to be, right, let's yeah. make sure that we've got the agreements in place that support this SaaS and subscription yeah. motion going forward, and then the sky's the limit for us. You're plugging that right into to, oh. to well, GreenLake, right? Here's why, right? Here's why, so, right? so customers are loving the fact that they can go to a public cloud and they can get an SLA. They come to uh, you know, an on-premise, You've got the hardware, you've got the software, you've got the, you know, the guys on board to maintain this through its life cycle. Right. I mean, this is complicated stuff. Yeah. Now we've got a situation where you can say, hey, we can get an SLA on premise. Yeah, and I think what you're seeing is, it's very analogous to having a financial advisor just manage your portfolio. You're taking care of just submitting money. That's really a lot of what a lot of the customers have done mm -hmm. with the public cloud. But now a lot of these customers are getting savvy. They have been working with VMware Technologies and HPE for so long. They've got expertise. They know how they want their, their workloads uh, architected. 
Now we've given them a model where they can leverage the cloud platform to be able to do this, whether it's on-premise, the edge, or in the public cloud, leveraging HPE, GreenLake, and VMware. Is it, is it predominantly or exclusively a managed service, or do you find some customers saying, hey, you know, we want to manage ourselves. How, 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 what are you seeing is the mix there? It is, it is not predominantly managed right. services right now. We're actually, as we are growing, last time we talked at HPE Discover, we talked about a whole bunch of new services that we've added to our catalog. Um, it's growing by leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks are definitely interested in the pay as you go, obviously the financial model, but are now getting exposed to all the other management that can happen. There are managed ser uh, services capabilities, but actually running it as a service with your systems on-prem is a phenomenal idea for all these, these customers, and they're opening their eyes to some new ways to service their customers better. And another phenomenon we're seeing there is where partners such as HP are using other partners for various areas of right. the, the services implementation as well. So that's another phenomenon. You know, you're seeing the resale motion now going into yeah. a lot more of the services motion. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's interesting too, you know, I mean, the digital mon mon modernization that's going on, the transformation, we don't want to call it, is complicated, that's, yeah, that's sure. clear. One of the things I liked about the keynote today was the concept of cloud chaos. Yeah. Because we've been saying, you know, quoting Andy Grove, next <laughs> Intel, let chaos reign and reign in the chaos. Mm -hmm. and, and when you have mm. inflection points, complexity, which is the chaos, needs to be solved, and whoever solves yep. it and kicks the inflection point, that's up and to the right. So, Prime idea right here. So Green you know? Lake is- Well look at also, look at the, the distribution model and how that's changed. A couple of points right. on a deal, now they're saying, I'll be your aggregator, I'll take the strain and I'll give you scale. You know, I'll give you VMware scale for all, right. you know, for all of the uh, various different partners, et cetera. Yeah, so let's break this down because this is, I think, a key point. Mm. So complexity is good, but the old model in the enterprise market was sure. you solve complexity with more complexity. Yeah. And everybody wins, oh yeah, we're locked in. That's not what the market wants. They want self-service, they want as a service, they want easy, developer first, security data ops, yep. DevOps is already in the, in the cycle, so yeah. they're going to want simpler, yeah. easier, yep. faster. And this is kind of why I'll, I'll say for the, the big announcement today here at VMware Explorer around the VMware vSphere distributed services engine, uh, Project Monterey yep. that we've talked about for yep. so long, um, HPE and VMware and AMD with the Pensando DPU actually work together to engineer a solution for exactly that. The capabilities are fairly straightforward in terms of the technologies, but actually doing the work to do integration, joint engineering, mm -hmm. make sure that this is simple and easy, and able to be running HPE GreenLake. We that's guys invested in Pensando, right? We're we an investor. What's the, what's the benefit of that? What's, yeah. you just, that's a great point you made. What's the value to the customer? Bottom line, that deep co-engineering, co-partnering, what does it deliver that others don't do? Yeah, well I think one example would be, you know, every, a, lot of, a lot of vendors can say, we support it, Yep. That's great, that's actually a really good move. Supporting it, it, it can be resold, that's another great move. Um, I'm, I'm not mechanically inclined to where I would go build my own car. I'll go to a dealership and actually buy one that I can press the button and I can start it and I can do what I need to do with my car. And that's really what this does, is the engineering work that's gone on between our two companies uh, and AMD Pensando, um, as well as the business work to make that simple and easy, that transaction to work. And then to be able to make it available as a service mm -hmm. is really what made, it's, it's, that's why it's such a winner with but our But it's company. also no. lower cost out of the box. Yeah. Yes. Right? So you're getting whatever, it's called 20%, yeah. okay? But, there's, but it's nuanced because you're also on a new technology curve. Right. And you're able to absorb modern apps, you know, we use that term as a bromide, but, mm -hmm. but when I say modern apps, I mean data rich yes. apps. You know, things that are more AI driven, not the conventional, not that people aren't doing you know, SAP and CRM, they sure. are but there's a whole slew of new apps that are coming in that you know, traditional architectures aren't well suited to handle from a price performance standpoint. Yeah. This changes that, doesn't well, it? Well you think also of the, you know, going to the next stage, which is the go to market between the two organizations that before. At the moment, you know, HPE's running off doing various different things, we're running off to it, and again it's that chaos that you're talking about in cloud chaos, you've got to go to market chaos. But yeah. by simplifying four or five things, what are we going to do really well together? How do we embed those in GreenLake mm -hmm. and be known in the marketplace for these solutions? Then you get a, you know, an organization that's really behind the go-to-market. You can help with sales activation, the enablement, you know, and then we benefit from the scale of HPE. Yeah. What are those solutions? I mean, is it, yeah, is it just, is it IaaS? Is it, you know, compute, storage? Yeah. Uh, is it, is it you know, specific, you know, SAP? Is it VDI? What, what are you seeing out there? So right now, for, uh, for this specific technology, mm -hmm. we're educating our customers on what that could be. And at, at its core, this solution allows customers to take services that normally and traditionally run on the compute system and yep. run on, the, on a DPU now with Project Monterey, 
Um, and this is now allowing customers to think about, okay, where are their use cases? So I'm, rather than going and say, use it for this, we're allowing our customers to explore and say, okay, here's where it makes sense. Where do I have workloads that are using a lot of compute cycles on services at the compute level that could be somewhere else, like networking as a great example, yeah. right? Yeah. And allowing more of those compute cycles to be available. So where there are performance requirements for an application, where there is timely response that's needed for, uh, for, you know, for results to be able to take action on, to be able to get insight from data really quick, those are places where we're starting to see the services moving on to something like a DPU, and that's where mm -hmm. this makes a yep. whole lot more sense. Okay, so to get this right, you got the hybrid cloud, right? You got yes. the Green Lake, and you got the distributed engine, what's that called? Yeah, for, it's HPE ProLiant. ProLiant with, with the, VMware, vSphere. The vSphere. Yeah, vSphere. That's the compute. Distributed. Okay, okay so thing. does the customer, yeah. how do you guys implement that with the customer? All three at the same time, or they mix and match? What's that, how does that work? All three of those components, yeah. So the, the beauty of the HP ProLiant with VMware, vSphere, distributed services engine, mm -hmm. also known as Project Monterey, for those who, that are yeah. keeping notes at home, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, again, already pre-engineered, so we've already worked through all the mechanics of how you would have to do this, so it's not something you have to go figure out how you build, get deployment, uh, you know, work through those details, that's already done. It is available through HPE GreenLake, so you can go and actually get it as a service uh, in partnership with our, custom, our friends here at VMware. And because if you're familiar and comfortable with all the things that HP ProLiant has done from a security perspective, from a reliability perspective, trusted uh, supply chain, all those sorts of things, you're getting all of that with this particular solution. Sumit uh, Duan had a great quote on theCUBE just an hour or so ago. He mm. said, you have to be early to be first. <laughs> yeah. I love that, I love that quote. <laughs> okay, so you were, exactly right. you were first, you were probably <laughs> a little early, but do you, do you have a lead? I know you're going to say yes. Okay, let's just, let's just okay. assume that yeah. um, relative to the competition. H how do you know? How do you determine that? If we have a lead or not? Yeah, if you lead, if you're the best. Uh, we go to the source of the truth, which is our customers. And it's, what do they tell you? What, what, what do you look at and say, okay, now, I mean, when you, when you have that honest conversation and say, okay, we, we are, we're first, we're early, we're keeping our lead, what are the things that you I'll look say it at as way. indicators? I'll say it this way, we've been in a lot of businesses where, they're, where we do compete head to head in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. And we know how that sales process normally works. We're seeing a different motion from our customers. When we talk about HPE GreenLake, there's not a lot of back and forth on, okay, well, let me go shop around. It is HP Green, let's talk about how we actually build this and, solution. And I can tell you, from a VMware perspective, our customers are asking us for this, the other way around. So that's a great sign, is that, hey, we need to see this partnership come together in GreenLake. Yeah. It's the old adage that Amazon used to coin, Andy Jassy, you know, they do the undifferentiated heavy lifting. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of that's now, that's now cloud operations. Mm -hmm. Underneath is infrastructure as code to the right. developer. That's right. That's at scale. That's right. And so you got a lot of heavy lifting being done with GreenLake. Right. Which is why there's no objections probably. Right, what, absolutely. What's yeah. the choice? What are you going to shop? Yeah. There's nothing to shop around. And, yeah, exactly. And then we've got, you know, that is really icing on the cake that we've, you know, that we've been building for quite some time. There is a, a, an, an understanding in the market that what we do with our infrastructure is, is hardened from a reliability and quality perspective. Look, times are tough right now, supply chain issues, all that stuff. We've talked all talked about it. Um, but at HPE, we don't skimp on quality. We're going to spend the dollars and time on making yeah. sure we got reliability and security built in. It's really important to us. Yeah, we had a great use case. The storage team, they were provisioning with containers. Yes. Storage yeah. as a service just instantly. We're seeing with great you guys yeah. with VMware, your customers bringing in a lot of that in, uh, into the mix as well. Um, I got to ask, because every event we talk about AI and machine learning, mm -hmm. automation and DevOps are now infiltrating in with the CICD pipelining. Security and data become a big conversation. Yeah. Agreed. Okay, yeah, so yeah. how do you guys look at that? Okay, you sold me on green, like I've been a big fan from day one. Now it's got maturity on it. Uh, it's, I know it's going to get a lot more headroom to do there. It's still a sure. lot of work to do, but directionally it's pretty accurate. It's mm -hmm. going to yeah. be a success. There's still concerns about security, the data layer. That's agnostic of environment, private cloud, hybrid, public and edge. So that's important, and security Great. has got a huge service area. Yeah. These are unworking progress. Yeah. <laughs> How do you guys view those? I think, I think you've just hit the nail on the head. I mean, I was in the, uh, the press and journalist meetings yesterday, and our answer was exactly the same. There is still so much work that can be done here, and you know, I don't think anybody is really emerging as a true leader. Um, it's just a continuation of you know, trying to get that right, because it is what is the most important thing to our customers, right. mm -hmm. and the industry is really sort of catching up to that. 
And you know, when you start talking about privacy, and you, when you, it's, it's not just about company information, it's about individuals' information. Yeah. It's yeah. about you know, information that if exposed actually could have real impact on people. Mm -hmm. So it's more than just an IT problem. It is actually, and from HPE's perspective, security starts from when we're picking our suppliers for our components. Like there are processes that we put into our entire, entire trusted supply chain from the factory on the way up. I liken it to, um, uh, my golf swing, my golf swing I slice right like you wouldn't believe. Uh, <laughs> but when I go to the golf pros, they start me back at the mechanics, the foundational pieces. Mm -hmm. Here's where the problems are and start working on that. So my view is, our view is if, you're, if your infrastructure is not secure, you're going to have troubles with security as yeah. you go further up. Stay yeah. in the sandbox. Yeah. yeah, so to speak, you know, their driving range on the golf analogy <laughs> there, I love that. Um, talk about uh, supply chain security real quick because you mentioned supply chain on the hardware side. You're seeing a lot of open source and supply chain in software, trusted software. Yep. How does GreenLake look at that? How do you guys view that piece of it? That's important. Part. Yeah, security is one of the key pillars that we're actually driving as a company right now. As I said, it's, it's important to our customers as they're making purchasing decisions. Um, and it, we're looking at it from the infrastructure all the way up to the, to the actual service itself. And that's the beauty of having something like HPE GreenLake. We don't have to pick is the infrastructure or the middleware or the, or the top of stack application. It's we can look at the all SLA, of it. Right? It's all of yeah. it, yeah, it's, yeah. it's all of it. <laughs> yeah. That matters. Yeah. Uh, Question on the, uh, on the ecosystem posture. So sure. I remember when HP was you know, one company and then the GSIs were a little weird with HP because of EDS. You know, you had data protector, so you weren't really chatting up Veeam at the time, right? And sure. as soon as the split happened, ecosystem exploded. Now you have a situation where you know, Broadcom is acquiring VMware. You guys, big Broadcom customer. Has, has your attitude changed or has it not? Because, oh, we meet with the customers, oh, you've always said that, but have you, have, have you leaned in more? I mean, culturally, is HPE, HPE now saying, hmm, now we have some real opportunities to partner in new ways that that, that we don't have to sleep with one eye open, maybe. <laughs> so, I would, so first of all, VMware and HPE, we've got a variety of different partners. We always have, mm -hmm. if, yeah. well before any Broadcom announcement came along. Yeah, sure. We've been working with a variety of partners. And uh, that hasn't you're, changed. And that hasn't changed. And if, if your question is, has our posture toward VMware changed at all, the answer is absolutely not. We, we believe in what VMware is doing. We believe in what our customers are doing with VMware. Yeah. And we're going to continue to work with VMware and partner with you on. And of course, you know, we had the spin out ourselves in November of last year, which I worked right. on, you know, the whole Dell, the whole Dell piece. Yeah, but you still and had the same chairman. Yeah, companies. there we go, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> since, since then, I think what's really become very apparent, and not, it's not just with HPE, but with many of our partners, many of the OEM partners, the opportunity in front of us is vast. And we need to rely on each other to help us, at, you know, uh, solve the customer problems that are out there. So there's a willingness to overlook some things that in the past may have been you know, barriers. But it's important to note also that it's not that we have not had history, yeah. right? Over, we've got over 200,000 customers jointly. Hundreds of millions of dollars of business. 100,000, uh, over, over 10,000, or 100,000 channel partners that we have in common. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's yeah, you know, numerous, numerous And, in, and independent experts. of the whole Broadcom overhang there, yeah. there's the ecosystem floor, yeah. the expo floor. Yes, right. I mean, it's vibrant. I mean, mm. there's clearly a wave coming, Ricky. We yeah. talked about this briefly yeah. at HPE Discover. I want to get an update from your perspective, yeah. both of you, if you don't mind, weighing in on, there's clearly the wave coming. We're calling it super cloud because it's not just multi-cloud, it's sure. completely different looking successes. Smart cloud. It's not just <laughs> vendors, it's also the customers turning into clouds yeah. themselves. You look yeah. at Goldman Sachs, and yeah. you know, I think every vertical will have its own power law of cloud mm. players uh, in the future. We believe that to be true. We're still testing that assumption, but it's it's trending in when you got OpEx, right. has to go to an income statement, CapEx yep. goes to thanks for the cloud, all that's good. But there's a wave coming. Yeah. And we're trying to identify it. What do you guys see as this wave? Because beyond multi-cloud and the obvious nature of that will end up happening as a state, and, the, and what happens beyond that interoperability piece, that's a whole other story, and that's what everyone's fighting for, but everyone out in that ecosystem, it's a big wave coming. They got their surfboards, they're ready to <laughs> yeah. go. So what do you guys see? What is the next wave that everyone's jacked up about here? Well, I think that the, the multi-cloud is obviously at the epicenter. You know, if you, if you look at the results that are coming in, a lot of our customers, this is what's leading the discussion. And now we're in a position where, you know, 
we've brought uh, many companies over the last few years, they're starting to come to fruition. They're starting to play a role in you know, how we're moving forward. You know, some of those are a bit more applicable to the commercial space. We're finding commercial customers that never bought from us before, never. Hundreds and hundreds are coming through our partner networks every single quarter, mm -hmm. you know? So, brand new to VMware. The trick then is, how do you nurture them? How do you encourage them? So new logos areas? are coming in? New logos are coming oh, in right. all the time, yeah. all the time. From, you know, from across the ecosystem, it's not just the OEMs, it's all the way back. So the ecosystem's to back of VMware. Unbelievably. So, what are we doing to help that? There's two big things that we've, uh, we've announced in the recent weeks, is that Partner Connect 2.0. When I talk to you about multi-cloud and multi-cloud, you know, the, the customers are doing, you, um, you see that trend. Four or five different separate clouds that we've got here. The next piece is that they're changing their business models with the partners, the services is becoming more and more apparent, et cetera, you know? And the use of other partners to do other services, deployment, all this stuff is becoming prevalent. Then you've got the um, distributors that I talked about with their, you know, mm -hmm. their, then you route to market, then you route to business. So how do you encapsulate all of that and ensure you're rewarding partners on all aspects right. of that, whether it's deployment, whether it's test and depth, it's a points-based system we've put in place now. It's a big pie that's developing. Absolutely. The market's getting bigger. It's getting so much bigger, yeah. And, and then do you, you help agree, them obviously, with that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. In fact, I think for a long time we were asking the question of, is it going to be there or is it going to be mm. here? Which was now, the wrong question. Now it's everywhere. Now it's, now it's yeah. everything, yes. <laughs> yeah. And what I think that what we're seeing in the ecosystem is people are finding the spots that where they're going to play. Am I going to be on the edge? Yeah. Am I going to be an analytics play? Am I going to be a you know, cloud transition play? There's a lot of players are now emerging and saying we're, we're, yeah. we now have a, place, a part to play. And having that industry view, not just of you know, a commercial customer at yeah. that level, but the two of us are looking at, at telco, are looking mm. at financial services, at healthcare, yeah. at manufacturing, how do these new ecosystem players fit into them? Mm -hmm. The fog is lifting, for, everyone can see their position there. Yeah, right. we're now being asked for simplicity and talk to me about partner profitability. Yeah. How do I know where to focus my efforts? Mm -hmm. Am I spread too thin? You know, that's, and, and my advice to the partner ecosystem out there is, hey, let's pick our spots together. Let's really yeah. go to, and then strategic solutions that we were talking about yeah, is absolutely. a good example of that. Yeah. Sounds like composability to me, but not to go back. <laughs> 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 yeah. Guys, thanks for coming on. I think there's a big market there. I think the fog is absolutely. lit. People seeing their spot, there's value there. Value creation equals reward. Yeah. Simplicity, ease of use. This is the new normal. Great job. Thanks for coming Certainly on. Yeah, thank HPE you very much. Story thanks, you guys. Okay, back live thank coverage you. after thank this you. short break with more day one coverage here from the Blue Set here in Moscone. <laughs>